But it, the second part of the question, I think, should be, do we want the writers to leave town? And the answer is, no, I don't. And would I do, would I do what's necessary to keep them here? Yes, I would. And let me tell you why. First of all, would be the exposure. In the last years, due to the Ray's success, there was two cities in the world that got the attention that the city of St. Petersburg did and that other city in Pennsylvania got. That's important. 1.2 million people came to St. Petersburg calendar year last year from outside Pinellas County to see a ball game. That generated 300 and 300 million dollars for that same calendar year of 2008 of people coming to St. Petersburg, 107 million on hotel rooms alone. It created 300, excuse me, 3,000 jobs. That includes the devil rays, that includes the ancillary jobs that were started because of the food industry and the other people. So we've employed 3,000 new people due to the economy of the baseball team. In addition to that, other things have happened. That does not include the stays of a visiting team that comes 80 plus times a year that stay at the Benoit at $160 a night for a team that, tra <coughs> that travels with 60 persons. They have a 90 day minimum food allowance that does not include the players and their families. We are the number one major league city when a team comes from out of town that brings their families to stay. I look at baseball, and I'm a baseball fan, and yes, I've had tickets and all those other things, but the economy that it brings to us is too important to let it get away from us. The city of St. Petersburg is in the big leagues, and we need to stay there, and it's important for this city. Thank you. My name is John Sankus, and uh, a lot of you know me, everyone at the table does. Uh, sort of a complex question, I guess. Um, unfortunately, well, no, I'll say fortunately, we don't have the ability to, to print our own money here, but Washington does. Uh, trillions of dollars that we don't have is just phony paper that's being printed at the moment, and we would it would appear that in the foreseeable future, when we don't know, that uh, we're going to see an inflation on the scale that we haven't seen since uh, pre-World War II Germany and uh, the inflation, the hyperinflation that kicked in. That is something that we're looking at. Uh, talking about uh, cap and trade, every single household in this city, every single household in America is facing thousands and thousands of dollars in brand new taxes. We promised no new taxes. We've got tons of taxes coming down on us through this cap and trade that finally makes its, its way through. Through the socialization of medicine, along with the socialization of the automobile industry, socialization of the, the financial industry, when it finally hits, because they're talking about rationing health care, right down the street here at Bayfront Medical Center, all children's hospital, all of our medical institutions, we're looking at thousands of people who are going to be losing their jobs in the not too distant future. And I would like to know what we're going to do here at the local level in uh, unifying, getting uh, in, in association with other cities in this state across the country to push back against Washington that we want to maintain a free enterprise system. Is there a question? I want to make this real hard on you because I'm going to give you two minutes. Yeah, exactly. I, I, understanding full well that we could talk about this one subject for four hours and still not get it solved. Um, whoever wants to hop in first. John, was your question more related to the medical industry or? The overall, the overall concept of the cities uniting, because you're, well, you're the representative of St. Petersburg, but there's a thing called the League of Cities and a number of other organizations. And through your voices, uniting with other mayors and other city council members throughout the entire state and across the country, because that's, it goes to the earlier question about the 10th Amendment was never directly addressed. And that is the power belongs to us right here in River City and not the, the bureaucrats in Washington, D.C. or politicians in Washington or in some other place in the world that we're talking about U.N. government now, too. What are we going to do to maintain our sovereignty, our independence, and a free market 
system. If you're looking at thousands more people who are going to be thrown out of work right here in our own community in the next several months, if this uh, rationing uh, of medicine occurs in this country. The first answer is do what this organization has done. Get people in elected office that believe in the locale, their hometown. It begins there. I'm in the business of providing medical services. Trust me when I say this. I've done it for 45 years. Don't let anybody talk you into any type of socialized medicine, any type of program. If we want to have the crying towel for the people that don't have insurance, the answers are very simple. 62 cents of every dollar spent in Medicare goes to administration. Okay? That means you can simply streamline the process of how medical providers get paid, eliminate some of the bureaucracy, and you have more than enough money to keep the Medicare program alive and ensure the people that are uninsured. Do not do not be talked into this crying towel about the people that don't have insurance. From a, from a government standpoint, the government needs to stand up, the elected officials need to stand up, understand what the problem is, and if we want to help people, everybody that I know in the medical industry daily provides services that help people without charging them because they don't have the ability to pay. I know that some of you out here are providers. I know that you do that. I know you've done it all your life. I do the same thing. But the issue is you can't let the government into that. It will ruin your ability and your family's ability to stay healthy and be provided the first-class medical care that we have in St. Petersburg, in the state of Florida, in this country. My experience is a little bit different from Larry's because, I don't know, Larry, do you accept any Medicare patients? I don't accept folks who have government subsidies. And so, that being said, however, and I know David, you probably accept some uh, Medicare patients, and John, you probably do too if you're still here. I've heard that actually working with Medicare is easier than working with some of the private insurance companies. That, and so I disagree with Mr. Williams a little bit on this. And it's based partly on the experience that I had with my mom before she died. She had COPD and we were dealing with that over the last 17 years. And once she qualified for Medicare, she didn't have nearly the number of hassles and it was a lot less costly. And in dealing with my own daughter's three knee surgeries, and thank you, Larry, I think you did all three of her MRIs, it was interesting because, for example, when I got the itemized bill from St. Anthony's, it was $30,000 for a six-hour outpatient procedure. Yet when I got my Aetna bill, it was $2,500 was the insurance amount. Now, I think the $30,000 could have built a small operating room. Not really, but that's an awful lot of money. And yet I think the care she received from those nurses in the recovery room, and this is just the, the hospital outpatient bill, it's not anesthesia or the physician's fee, was worth more than $2,500. It, the healthcare system is really, really broken. And it really, really, really does need to be fixed because it is such a huge cost for small businesses today. What we pay for premiums is just unbelievable. I disagree. I think we need to work at fixing the health care um, insurance and health care problem. We really have not demanded of health care their zero-based budgeting. We really don't know what it costs. And we have nursing that's lumped in with hospital costs. And that's just one area where I respectfully disagree. I think we have to get involved and I think we have to fix this system. I certainly want to be careful about how we use taxpayer dollars. We never should have agreed to Medicare pharmacy funding um, because we should have been negotiating for a better deal.